Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 15th, 2021 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Looks like, at least from anecdotal evidence, uh, that lately we have seen a little bit uh, a resurgence of CHM files. Uh, these are Microsoft help files, used to be really popular uh, in malicious attachments, but have been fading off, uh, well, until uh, recently. And the idea here is that these CHM files contain HTML that, since it's executed locally can then execute JavaScript that in turn, at least here in the example that Xavier came across, is used to launch PowerShell. Of course, once you have PowerShell, then the sky is the limit and here additional malware is being downloaded and executed. So it doesn't really give the attacker any new capabilities. They didn't have sort of an existing zipped JavaScript and HTML files. But typically the reason why attackers are trying and rotating through different extensions like this is just to see if you let down your guard, you're no longer looking at these particular files. And as a result, they may be able to slip in some malicious content. And SIFT, a company that helps uh, prevent uh, payment card fraud, has come across an interesting scheme how fraudsters are able to monetize stolen account and credit card data. Now, it's not always uh, payment information that's being stolen here, but in this particular case, also login information for various food delivery services. The way the data is monetized is uh, that uh, these fraudsters are then offering their services, for example, via Telegram, and the individual is uh, then able uh, to place an order via Telegram using the fraudster at of course, a substantial discount. So it's a little bit like uh, buying a super discount stereo of a van at the side of the road. And well, if you are still using the Excellian file transfer appliance or short FTA, stop doing so now. A number of large companies were breached using particular vulnerabilities in this particular device. Latest example, Singapore telecom company Singtel has been breached uh, back in January using this vulnerability. The tricky part here is that there is no patch. This particular appliance is 20 years old. It's no longer being maintained. So really your only option here, and this is really an urgent option, is to continue using these devices. And mobile security company Proof uh, did a survey 30 different mobile health applications and found, well, uh, probably no big surprise here, but somewhat sad that many of them uh, contain some basic security vulnerabilities, including issues like hard-coded API keys and the ability to directly access uh, objects without authentication. These are of the basic vulnerabilities. Uh, we cover them, for example, in our uh, Defending Web Applications uh, class at length, but they still happen as often developers don't appear to quite understand that while in a mobile application, you don't necessarily have a URL that's easily manipulated like in a browser. Well, the request is still easily manipulated and artificially uh, crafted. Now, they do not list the mobile applications that they tested, but apparently it was applications that, for example, used to interact with your doctor, with hospitals to retrieve medical records. And they were able to access other people's medical records using these insecure APIs. Then in the end, uh, most mobile applications are really just a front end that does uh, retrieve data from some form of web service. Not really much you can do as an end user about uh, these uh, applications other than, well, use them as little as possible. But then again, sometimes you just don't have a choice. If you are creating uh, these web services and mobile applications, then, well, uh, please get educated in how to do it correctly. 
And Bloomberg revived a story they first reported on in 2018, stating that the Chinese government did use motherboards manufactured by Supermicro in China in order to add implants to specific motherboards that would be delivered then to critical government customers in the US. In addition to just reaffirming that the often disputed story from 2018 was indeed correct, they do offer some new evidence, including one named source that does state that they actually have firsthand seen one of these malicious implants. The basic story was really all about that some motherboards delivered by Supermicro had been modified. An additional component was added to the motherboard that essentially represented a backdoor. Well, of course, uh, this entire story is very well within the capabilities and the overall goals of the Chinese government. It has uh, really been hard to sort of get any tangible evidence that this happened in particular as far as super micro is concerned there have been other similar cases that have been better documented but the super micro itself is still denying the story and part of the bloomberg story at least does lead to the conclusion that super micro may not have been informed by authorities of this particular implant the story also uh, does somewhat clarify uh, that Supermicro was not considered complicit here, but uh, really just sort of an innocent supplier that was subverted without Supermicro's knowledge. So in short, could China have done it? Probably. Uh, would China do it if they have the ability to do it? Certainly. And uh, well, whether or not it happened exactly like outlined in the Bloomberg uh, article and how much Supermicro was involved in all of this, that's really the big question. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And I did notify the winners of uh, the uh, Raspberry Pis for uh, January. Uh, didn't get a response back from one of the winners. So um, check your email. And if I don't hear by the end of Monday, I'll uh, probably just give it away to the next individual. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.